GHX's John Dahl flew over from California to provide three days of exclusive tutorials to a select audience of lucky readers at the Bristol Sound and Vision Show. Here are his tips for better home cinema. Once you get your speakers home, and by the way, this applies to all speakers, not just THX certified speakers, uh, you will want to place uh, the center channel uh, in the middle of the screen in such a way as that everybody who's going to be listening can actually see the speaker. Because the center channel is the most important channel in the whole system. It's where most of the dialogue is, and if you compromise the quality of the center channel, your system's not nearly as good as it should be. For the left and right speakers, uh, we recommend spreading them 45 to 60 degrees, uh, but it really depends on the screen size. Uh, you don't want them right hard by the screen unless it's very big because you don't want to get mono. On the other hand, you don't want to spread the speakers too far apart because then the sound from the speaker doesn't actually match up with the picture. So you want to have them congruent. Now for surround speakers, remember that what's recorded in the surround array is sounds that acoustically match what's on the screen. So 90 plus percent of the time it's not very loud and it's intended to be in the background. So for a surround speaker, you should never hear the speaker. You should always hear uh, only the sound coming from the surrounds, even when there's a special effect. So you want a speaker that is a high dispersion type for most home theater installations, which could be a dipole or a bipole. So we recommend that the left and right surrounds go to the side, not behind, and that they go high in the room, so you get a lot of reflected sound from the room. Uh, if you have speakers in the back on a 7.1 system, you would do it the same. You would spread them perhaps uh, 60 degrees apart or 45 degrees apart and high in the room so you're surrounded by sound. Now everybody loves the special effect sound that you get with surrounds, but in fact that's only a tiny percentage of what happens in the surrounds in the movies. They're really there to make you believe you're in the space being pictured. As far as uh, screen size, which of course is one of the first thing people want to know, our general recommendation is make it bigger. Because when we interview people after they've had their screen for a month or so, they almost universally wish they'd bought a bigger one. If you're going to do a 16 by 9 screen, here's a cheater number to get a 40 degree screen, which is kind of right in the middle there, and about as big as we recommend for a flat panel. Uh, take the diagonal measurement, which worldwide is measured in inches. All over the world they measure them in inches, which is weird, not centimeters. Uh, and use the multiplier 0 0.84. Now, you can use that to determine the screen size given a viewing distance or the viewing distance given a particular screen size to give you a really quite a large screen, a 40 degree wide horizontal angle which is about as big as a flat panel can be before you start to see all the pixels. Now, the purpose of four subwoofers is not to make the system really loud. The purpose of using multiple subwoofers is to smooth out the bass modes in the room. Because the simple fact is that if you're using decent quality subs, what you hear below 200 hertz or so depending on how big the room is, what you hear is almost entirely determined not by the subwoofers, but by the room itself. Because bass energy gets trapped in the room and it resonates. The room acts like a big organ pipe. And I'm sure you've all leaned up against the wall and heard how loud the bass is. That's bass being trapped by the room and reflected back and forth in the room. It's an echo at low frequencies and it resonates. So you get harmonic frequencies in the room. Now we use multiple subwoofers to actually reduce the amplitude of those various room modes, how loud or soft they are. That's what multiple subwoofers are for. And there's a whole bunch of configurations. If you have one subwoofer, we recommend that you put it in the front of the room rather than someplace else in the room because that makes it easier to get the match with the front speakers correct. Putting it in the middle of the room helps to smooth out the base mode side to side. If you can't put it right in the middle, put it about a quarter of the way in from one wall or the other. It's a good place to start. Then you can fool around with it and uh, smooth out the base. If you have two subwoofers, you have a bunch of different choices. One would be to put one in the middle of the front wall and one in the middle of the back wall. That would smooth out the base modes side to side in the room. Uh, if you took them and moved them halfway between the front and back walls here, you would wind up smoothing out the base front to back in the room. 
If you have four subwoofers, this is a terrific configuration, one in each corner. And that actually gives you a very large group of seats. Now, if you have only one subwoofer, you can get one or two good base seats, but not more than that usually, where it's really accurate and smooth. Uh, now, if you have four subwoofers, you could also do a configuration like this, where we're using the, the second harmonic quarter of the way in from the room trick in the front and the back, or as we've done here, we have just those two quarter of the way in from each wall in the front to help smooth out the bass response in this room side to side. So there are a whole bunch of things that you can do, but here's another really important thing. You take the bass from all of the channels. You, below 80 hertz, every single channel gets crossed over at 80 hertz, and all of that sound is sent to the subwoofer. And then the LFE track is mixed with that, and that's what comes out of the subwoofer. And it's all in mono. Little gadget like this. You know, you can just daisy chain these through the room. That's just a Y connector, that's all it is. And just run that signal to all the subwoofers. You should, under no circumstances, run a different signal to different <coughs> subwoofers. The room, then it, it, it defeats the purpose of smoothing out the, the bass with, with uh, multiple subwoofers. We've teamed up with Onkyo and THX to offer a complete THX certified system to one lucky reader as a competition prize. For your chance to win an Onkyo HTS 9305 worth £1,000, simply click on the THX logo within this video or log on to whatHiFi.com.